Good morning. Stanley Jackson of the Cochran Firm. I'm here with Mr. Farrell Thomas, the father of Christian Thomas, who was tragically killed in Cleveland Heights on August 29th in this community. We're here today because we wanted the community and the world to know who Christian was. Christian was a young man who was a spelling bee champ, a national spelling bee champ, a saxophonist, a beautiful young soul whose life was cut short. On the night in question, Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Thomas, being of this beautiful community, called this police department looking for assistance and help. Now let me tell you a little bit about Cleveland Heights and why he would call this community. He and his family are from Cleveland Heights. They've been residents and, and, and their family has been residents for over 50 years. This is the same community that Jason and Travis Kel Kelsey has talked about, about the diversity and the inclusion and the tolerance and the acceptance it's one of the most diverse communities in the country. It's a model community, as in the members of the community. However, but the police department is not, because Mr. Thomas called looking for help. Living at Yellowstone, just down the street, eight houses from this very police department. He called for help, and as he was told to leave the house, he left the house, and as he left the house, he said, I'm not going to leave my son. They demanded that he come out. And when he came out, the last plea that he had to the police officers were, don't kill my son. Moments later, Officer Stevens pulls out an AR rifle and guns down his son as he's running through the backyard into the front yard. Mr. Thomas is here because he's looking for answers. We would hope in a community that is this diverse and it's supposed to be a model community, that there would be transparency. We've demanded, along with other organizations that are interested, demanded for the release of all the body cam footage. We've demanded for the release of all the officers who were involved and reports. It's been two weeks we have not received that. We would hope that today will spark this police department and the mayor to be transparent if we or this community is supposed to be the model community of the United States, then it should do the model thing by being transparent and open and sharing information so that we can get to the truth and justice for Mr. Thomas. I have with me the president of uh, NACP, president of Black Lives Matter, president of Citizens for a Safer Community, and I have Art McCoy here. There is no mystery that we all have come together because we love this family, we support this family, and we know how much this family and Christian meant to this community. It is a tragedy that we are even here today. Once again, this is a community that touts itself on being diverse, inclusive, and tolerant. And unfortunately, when the moment came, that is not what this family got in return for their loyalty, and their community and their commitment to Cleveland Heights. Now we'll have Kayla Griffin of Black Lives Matter who will step up, I mean, of uh, NACP. Kayla Griffin Green, I'm the president of the Cleveland branch of the NACP. Um, we are here standing with the family because um, as you have heard and as you will continue to hear, we want to have transparency in how policing is done and how our communities are governed. There is no way that this would happen um, to a white family and we would not have transparency. There wouldn't be an urgency um, to talk to the families, to talk to the lawyers. And so we are asking that all of the body camera cam footage be released. We are asking for reports to be released and shared not only with the family, but with the investigators. We are hoping that this will be a fair and transparent process, but it is not starting off that way. And so we at the NAACP will be sending a letter to the officials as well, um, a public records request asking for all of the body cam footage to be released and all of the reports to be released so that the the investigators, the BCI, can begin the investigation so that this is not stalled, so that it does not appear that they are trying to adjust footage, um, doctor reports, and that this is something um, that they will put out in the media that it is not. 
We want to be able to see and judge for ourselves and we want justice to be served. Thank you. Brenda Bickerstaff, Citizens for a Safer Community. I'm Ms. Bickerstaff. I'm the founder of Citizens for Safer Cleveland. I know too well what this family is going through. I lost a brother, Craig Bickerstaff, that was killed by the Cleveland police in 2002. I lost a niece in this jail, Rakina Jones, that died in this jail in, 19, in, in 2015. At the end of the day, I'm going to piggyback off of um, NAACP president. Right now, as a PI, and I investigate these cases in other cases, right now I know that you're doctoring this information. Because first of all, the day that it occurred, that information should have been stripped from those officers and sent immediately to BCI with proof that it was sent. Do not doctor these reports and do not delete information on these body cams because you are going to be called out. I was up here right after it occurred and one of the officers told me, uh, Sergeant, oh, it's going to be transparent. I can't tell because the family should have known and the attorney, Mr. Jackson, that that information was going immediately. You don't wait. You don't halt. You do it immediately in an instance. So there will be no question about your intentions. So I'm here today to say transparency. If we don't get it, we're going to keep coming at you until we get it. Thank you. Many of us in the community, including myself, have to go over this pain over and over again. I myself was abused by the police years ago. So when I hear of a case like what happened in Cleveland Heights, I suffer all over again as many of the other young black men and women suffer all over again. That's why we are so saddened that our dear brother here has, and sisters and family have to go through the same pain. On the news right now, they're talking about the football player in Florida, how he could have been murdered by zealous police. We feel like this case here is the same way. He's just not a football player, but he has a dad, he has a mom, he has family. And they feel the same way as I stand here with this sister. And I leave you, I want to leave you the words of this family. No truth, no justice, no peace. No truth, no justice, no peace. No truth. No truth. Come on, y'all. No truth. No truth. No justice. No justice. No peace. No peace. You will not have peace until justice is served. Thank you. I, I just want to say that my Christian is a lovely boy, and I will miss him. Good morning. First, I want to extend my condolences to the family in this community. I am I'm sorry for your loss, and I, I hate that I have to be here. But I'm here because I, too, am a family that was directly impacted by policing. Uh, Tamir Rice is my 12-year-old cousin. He was killed by police in Cleveland. We'll be celebrating his 10-year anniversary. So I am tired. I am upset, and I am angry that we constantly have to continue to do this. We constantly have to continue to show up for families because police are out of control. This is ridiculous. Whatever happened to first call? There's a crisis intervention team here. Why weren't they sent to the scene? This is unacceptable. To, for police officers to be carrying AR-15s. We just had school shooting. Four kids were killed. This is ridiculous. Our streets are, are war zones because of police officers who don't know how to control themselves, who don't know how to abide by the law. We need to end qualified immunity and hold these officers accountable. I am tired of showing up for families. I am tired 
of going to funerals because of overzealous policing. It's ridiculous. Historically, our communities have suffered because of policing. Because of police officers who, who fear for their life. You shouldn't be a police officer if you fear for your life that much. Where is the order to serve and protect? Christian needed help that day. You were supposed to be there to help him, to serve and protect. You killed with impunity. We want answers. We want transparency. And like they said, we'll be back. And we're going to keep coming back. We're going to march these streets and we're going to stand in front of this building until we get answers. Christian was somebody. He was loved. He was a brother. He was a son, a grandson, a nephew, a cousin, just like Tamir. He deserved to live. He deserved to live. We want answers. We want transparency, and we want the videos released immediately. Immediately. Thank you. Now, I do want to point out to you guys something that I'm sure you probably have read. The police chief of this department has come out and said that he has reviewed the body cam, and he did not see Christian with a gun, nor did he see Christian point a gun at the officers. He made that statement earlier to the press a week ago. Unfortunately, we don't have the body cam that he's been talking about that he's reviewed. He's the police chief. He has access to all the body cam. So let's not make a mistake that other statements about there may have been a gun, he may have pointed a gun. The police chief of this department about his officers and the incident that took place, the tragic killing, said, and I'll repeat, that I did not see Christian with a gun and I did not see Christian point the gun at any officers, and then he concluded with, this was tragic. Now we're gonna have the neighbors of Christian who, who he died in their yard. They have a Black Lives Matter sign in their yard. A supportive family. He was running to their yard for safety. Please come on. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Jennifer Woda. This is my husband, Brian Thornton. Um, and we are the next door neighbors of the Thomas family. I actually grew up in Cleveland Heights. I went to Coventry and Roxborough and Heights High, graduated class of 1989. And anyone who's from this community has a lot of pride in this community. We love it here. We love the diversity. It's not just racially diverse, it's economically diverse, it's religiously diverse. And we all, you know, I mean, every community has their issues, but we all feel so much pride in the way we coexist and live and let everybody live the way they wish to live here. And um, living uh, on Yellowstone across the street next to the Thomas family has been great. We moved in in 2018, but we had moved from three blocks away because we wanted to stay in this community. Uh, our daughter is very, very good friends with the Thomas family's uh, daughter, Jenny, and uh, she's been on vacations with us. Uh, Grandma Mary brings her granddaughter to the music classes that I teach, and we are just very, very close. And so to have this happen, like you said, uh, less than 10 feet away from the Black Lives Matter sign that's been in our yard for years, just just to me, just felt like the hugest piece of irony ever. You know, uh, Cleveland Heights, we stand for unity, we stand for Black Lives Matter. And I was just completely devastated that our police decided to just ignore that. And when the family called for help, they ended up just killing him in our front yard. I'm Brian Thornton. I'm a neighbor of this beautiful Cleveland Heights family, the Thomases. You know, we saw this wonderful young man, Christian, walking his dog all the time in the neighborhood. We would share dinner with them. And Cleveland Heights should be better than this. You know, I think the least that we can ask for is transparency. When we're dealing with such a wonderful family, such a great group of people that live in Cleveland Heights. I think we need to expect to be better. and We need to be better. And we love the Thomas family like family. They are our family. And we miss Christian so much. this time, if there are any questions that um, you may have for uh, myself or the family, we will take them. 
people wanted to ask, the police chief said that he had reviewed some of the body cam footage and said that he didn't see a gun pointed or, or in the hands of Christian. What do you think the holdup is on releasing this footage to the public, to the family? To be honest with you, if I had that answer, um, I'd be able to read minds, right? Or uh, I'd have something so valuable that I probably wouldn't be a lawyer at this point. But to be frankly honest with you, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I would hope that they would be, um, you know, this community tells themselves on being transparent. This very police department um, has an academy where they're teaching officers that go out to other communities. So it's very alarming to see them act in this behavior. It's very alarming to see one of their officers who, um, who was carrying AR rifle and, and, and killed uh, Christian. But, I mean, to answer your question, I mean, he's already answered the question that we all have wondered, did he have a gun and was he a threat? He's already answered that question. At this point, the body cam footage is just more evidence of what he saw himself, but we don't have the luxury of that. And just to be clear, he said that he saw some of that footage when he talked to reporters. As a police chief, the police chief is more than likely going to look at the most critical footage before he makes a statement. He is the chief. So there is no other footage, or there should not be any other footage, that would show anything contrary to what he would say. He knows better than to speak to the media and make that statement without reviewing all of it. Have you so seen it, the footage that was released today? Yes, we have seen it, and we know that that footage doesn't show anything, as you very well have probably looked at it. That's the same footage we received. We also know that BCI is doing an investigation, and they have yet to receive all of the footage. So the investigating body who's supposed to be investigating you you haven't released, you meaning Cleveland Heights Police Department, has not released that footage to them as well. That's, that's a problem. We're two weeks out. That's the first thing that should happen. Questions? Yes? I mean, from the little body camera that we were able to see, you hear shots fired, but do we know if it was Christian that fired the first shot? It was unclear during the press conference when we talked to them several weeks ago. You hear shots fired, but do we know that Christian was the first to shoot? So I don't want to speculate. I've seen the same video. I've, we've done our research. Uh, as you very well know, the Cochran firm, started by Johnny Cochran, we're very thorough and aggressive in, in our research that we do and when we represent families. We know that there were at least six officers minimum that were there. We know that at least two officers went to the back of the house. We know that from the video um, that was released to us that one of the officers told two of the officers to go to the back. That was not the same officer who was carrying the AR who was in front of the house. So I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. The officer who was in the front doesn't know that there are two officers in the back, to be frankly honest with you, because it's not radioed over to the other officers. So there is an issue here. And those two body cams from the officers in the back will tell us a lot more than what we all have questions for. We'll get maybe a clearer picture. But I suspect that's why you haven't seen them, I haven't seen them, and BCI hasn't seen them. I wanted to do a follow-up. Um, obviously, you saw the other disturbing part is handling after. Um, do you have a comment on the fact that the cuffs were put on Christian? Yes. Um, once again, we talked about this community being a diverse, accepting, tolerant community. It's a model community for the United States, right? This is what Cleveland Heights is. Um, and in his time of need and emergency, those officers did not respond in a way that we would expect professionals to do, people who are supposed to be part of the community that respect you. Um, it was clear that he was in duress. He was in distress, I'm sorry. It was clear that he needed medical attention, and it was clear that those officers either A, didn't care, or B, didn't know what to do. I have two questions. Sure. Um, first, do we have an autopsy report? Do we know how many times Christian was shot by these three officers? You said... Autopsy you, report, do we know how many times... No, we do not have an autopsy report. So, once again, when we're asking for transparency, we want all the records, right? We also know that normally the medical examiner, or some people call him the coroner, um, takes his time when he does the report. And, unfortunately, those reports don't come out, you know, for three to three weeks to a month. We suspect that that report will come out. The medical examiner is normally pretty good at at least sharing that with the family. I've asked for that report, 
and I'm sure at least through their office, we will get the report as soon as it's available. Have you been able to obtain any names of these officers? Uh, I've only been able to, no, let me say that. They, I've, I've requested the names. I know that Officer Stevens was the one who had the AR who shot because his body cam, his name is on the body cam. So unless it's some other officer's name on another body cam, um, that's the only person that I know of. There was an officer, Perez, who was there. Um, one of the officers mentions his name. So we're left to our own to try to figure this out. That is unfair and unreasonable. That is not what you know a police department in a model city is supposed to be doing. Um, that is not constitutional policing. And just like you want the information, we have the same amount of information you do at this moment, two weeks later. Time and time again, we come across these incidents, right? We call police for help, and that's what we are expecting. So what kind of message does this send nationally? You know, this is not just happening here in Ohio, but other cities. So does this kind of give the whole intuition of can we call police? Will they help us? What message does that send to younger people, older people looking for that help? It sends a message that we as African Americans cannot, even in a model city, model city expect respect and constitu constitutional policing. We cannot expect we cannot even hope that we will receive help when called upon to the police. Can you talk about the circumstances that got police there? I heard several people say, you know, help was needed, obviously. Police were called. What precipitated before the, that, that got the call in the first place? There was a normal, you know, heated disagreement between Christian and his father. His father thought, hey, maybe I can get some officers here. We can talk and try to figure this out. And he thought that when he called, because he lives in Cleveland Heights, model community, that they would come and they would be able to figure this out together. And the gun, was it a family gun? There was a gun in the house? Um, as you know, the same information you guys have, the lack of information, is the lack of information we have. Christian and his father were having a discussion or an argument, and he was told to leave the house. So we don't have all of that information at the moment. Now let me remind you of who Farrell Thomas is. Farrell Thomas um, is a wonderful father, to be frankly honest with you. He has been Father of the Year two times in our, in our local community. We have this thing called Fatherhood Initiative. He has been the Father of the Year twice because of how he loved and parented his children. And so a man with that much love and compassion a model father and a model community calls out for help. And his last words as he leaves the house is, don't kill my son. As they, as they make him leave the house, he says, don't kill my son. Yeah. Okay? And he's left with the death of his son because he called for help. Because that officer didn't, wasn't properly trained, didn't know what he was doing, the other officers, didn't take in compassion that this young man needed help. There was no plan. You can tell that from the video. If he experiences that, the rest of us have nothing else to look forward to. Father of the year. I haven't received a father of the year, but I hope one day I will. But a model community, model father, you can't ask for better circumstances, but with worse results, the worst possible results. And as a black male, we go home to our sons and our daughters and we have to look at them in the face and understand that this world, yes, even sir. in a model community, we are left with, we are left with this. Yes, sir. We are no better than we were four years ago. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Make it plain. That's unacceptable. I'm curious because, I mean, we, we see this story a lot, especially like a hostage negotiation, for example. The crisis management team is on hand and they try and make contact with the person holding so many hostages. Let's say that's the situation. In this situation, was the crisis management team, do you know if they were on hand and do you know if at any time Christian was, they tried to make contact with Christian to talk to Christian? Uh, from what I can tell from the limited video that we received, um, there was discussion, but they were not there. Um, from what um, I can tell from the limited body cam footage that I received that you guys may have received, and we're left to be our own investigators, right? Um, which is fine if we have all of the 
evidence. But from what I can tell, no. There was no crisis team there. Um, we know that they received funds two years ago from the county for that, so they're well equipped for it, and they should have had it there. And I apologize, but just to follow up, we did not hear this earlier, but I think we can confirm that Farrell was actually outside of the house. They had gotten him outside of the house into safety, and it was just Christian that was left inside. I'd yes. Okay. Thanks. So Farrell was inside the house. They commanded him to come out. He said to them, I'm not going to leave my son. In fear of potentially, once he looked out the door, he saw officers. Um, when he left, when he came out reluctantly, all he asked them to do was to not kill his son. How many, how many shots were fired and what were they fired at from inside the house by Christian? We don't know that because we don't have that information. Parents didn't, dad didn't know because he wasn't there? Dad was outside. Dad was inside. There was an incident that took place inside and then he went outside. And how there, many shots were inside when that incident happened? We don't have all of that information. Um, who is someone from the family, friends? Um, you said Christian was a spelling bee champ, he was a saxophonist. Does anyone want from the friends or family want to paint or give us a picture of who Christian is and who he was and how he grew up or anything? So I, I think they're. Um, Here, I'll, I'll say. Okay. Christian's uncle. I want you guys to understand that. One thing about a black community is that fathers matter. We have a lot of black men that are here today that supported and loved Christian. As you can see, they're all here. They were a part of his village. And this is a beautiful family and a beautiful community that received the worst of the police department. This is his uncle, John Thomas. Thank you. So first and foremost, um, you know, Christian, knows God, you know. Um, he was an active member of the church, of plenty of churches throughout his 18 years. Um, I think that's the, the best and the the thing that I know the most about my nephew is that he, he knows God, he knew God, he was in his word, he was active in the church, and, um, you know, he loves his family, you know. God, um, God bless the results. Thank you. So um, at this time, we won't take any more questions. We appreciate you coming out. Um, you know, as the media, we know that you guys also have an interest in the video. We would um, respect if you guys would be um, vigilant in pursuing that. Um, and here's to hoping that um, Cleveland Heights will, you know, although it's a model community, it will be model in the way that it responds to this. Unfortunately, at this moment, they have not. And uh, we will, uh, at the Cochran firm, as you very well know, be very aggressive and diligent in getting that video and getting other answers that this family deserves. Thank you very much.